Hi, this is Adam Elio Berkowitz. I'm privileged to be here with Pastor Mark Biltz. Um, this is one of these, he's one of these people that it's so difficult to introduce because there's so much to say. Um, he's been the the pastor of El Shaddai Ministries. Um, is that correct? Yeah, founder, yeah. founder. Founder and pastor of El Shaddai Ministries um, for 20 years. Um, and the amazing thing about Pastor Biltz is he knows all of the sources. And as an Orthodox Jew, he knows the Jewish sources, um, the biblical sources. Uh, he sees um, how the the time and the passage of time and the and the signs that 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 tell us what time is. He sees them in in a complete way. Uh, something that very, very few people do. Um, as an Orthodox Jew, the, the Talmud says that if you want to know what a smart person is, it's a person who knows the time, you know, who who know who knows the calendars. That's a that's a, that's a, a, a it's an absolute science. And Pastor Biltz has blown me away with his knowledge of that. So the reason why I'm meriting to speak to Pastor Biltz is we're coming up on a a um, solar eclipse across America. And he made an amazing video about it, and he's putting out a book about eclipses. Is it about eclipses, or what exactly is the book about? It's about destroying Amalek, as well as solar lunar eclipses that are happening on the holy days, the biblical holidays. Okay. So I wonder when you say destroying Amalek, if you had said that to me four months ago, it would have had a very different um, uh, impression on me because uh, the war in Israel, in Israel, all of us, and even, even Bibi Netanyahu and other people in the government are referring to this war against Hamas as a war against Amalek. So when when we usually when we talk about biblical prophecy coming to life, it's much more theoretical. Here, it's practical and happening on a daily basis. Uh, we're reading about it in the news. So, uh, Pastor Bills, um, all the details that you put in the video, um, I'll go through them, and I highly recommend getting the book. I'm going to get the book. Um, and um, it's a big book, so shipping it to Israel will be interesting. So first of all, I want to ask you, when I saw your video, there was a solar eclipse not so long ago in America, and they're not so common, um, and there were a lot of prophecies made about it. Um, what prophecies did you see connected to the last eclipse, the solar eclipse, and how did they work out? Well, for me, I like to jokingly say we are a nonprofit ministry. Okay. <laughs> I don't operate uh, in through prophecy as much as I stick with the Torah, with science, with math, and patterns. And there was the solar eclipse called the Great American Eclipse that went from Oregon down through South Carolina going from west to east. It so happens that was only the first total solar eclipse to cross the United States out of 12,000 eclipses that NASA records, this was the one and only that crossed only the United States and no other country. Right. So when I use the Talmudic sources <clears throat> saying the sun represents the nations, and this solar eclipse which wasn't just seven years ago. It was a Shemitah cycle seven years ago. Uh, and this solar eclipse, I thought, was going to have some kind of prophetic meaning. But I don't claim to be a prophet, but I knew it was highly significant. Well, now we're having one on April 8th. Wait, before you, before you get into the I'm upcoming one, I, before yeah. you go into the upcoming in the upcoming one, I, I uh, for Israel 365, I think back then it was breaking Israel news. I did a lot of reporting on that e eclipse, and it was very special 
you know, on a very simple level, it was very special that it happened. A lot of people were outside watching it. And a lot of skeptics were like, ah, it happens all the time. And you're like, no, it doesn't. And they're like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and I remember just one aspect of it was the tail end of the eclipse passed over um, the South Atlantic or the Atlantic Ocean. And where it passed over developed like three major hurricanes. Um, and so all these people yeah. said it's nothing. <laughs> it's like, no, it was something. And in retrospect, I'm sorry, you know, it happened seven years ago. And the last seven years have been very interesting between COVID and the wars. And oh, yeah. so um, if we're looking for, for. Not only that. I was going to say, not only that, they went through seven cities called Salem across the United States. Called, called what? Salem. Salem. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, the reason why that's significant to me is Salem originally comes from Yerushalayim, which is exactly. um, and in Kabbalistic terms, Yerushalayim is the sun because it, it, it means complete and the sun is always complete. And here we saw an eclipse where it wasn't complete passing over Salem. I was told that this one is going to pass over several cities named Nineveh. I, have I to, don't know. I, I, I don't know. I have that. to look into that. But, um, I mean, the, the last one was so significant. I mean, that's why we're talking about this now well in advance, because the last time we learned, it means something. I know you're non-profit, but there's definitely <laughs> prophecies. So, so that time we did see a lot came out of it. Um, and I'll be going yeah. back well, over I think, the, I think the reason why they are prophetic, I do believe they are prophetic. Uh, let me say that. I do believe they are prophetic. I just don't think that I am a prophet. But I think um, I do want to share things that are prophetic. When you look at Genesis 1.14, the number one reason God created the sun and the moon was for signs. That's why. Yep. And I think one of the reasons why is, just like in the original Exodus with Moses, Pharaoh's magicians tried to copy what Moses was doing. Of course, stupidly, they added to the problem instead of eliminating the problem. But uh, the thing to me is no one can manipulate an eclipse. No false prophet can do that. Not only that, they speak in every language. Every tribe, nation, and tongue understands. Uh, and so... The problem that most people, they say they don't mean anything, is because they're not on the right calendar. Of course, they don't mean anything on a pagan Gregorian calendar. But when they fall on the holy days, they're very significant. The reason why you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. And that is why God had Israel's calendar based on the new moon and Rosh Hashanah. You can only have a lunar eclipse on a full moon. And that is for like Passover and Sukkot. So not every one of the 12,000 solar eclipses, 12,000 lunar eclipses, they don't mean squat, only when they fall on the biblical feast days. Mm. So you would you would recommend that people attune themselves to the to the Hebrew calendar. And they the have Hebrew, to. They have to. Okay, Christian. Well, let me say this. They have to if they want to connect with the creator. They don't have to if they want to just, you know, not ever have a divine appointment, so to speak. God has them scheduled for heaven's sake. Yeah, and if you think about it, um, you know, we have a tendency to look at uh, the, the universe as, you know, huge clockworks, you know, like a huge watch with gears and everything just moving along. But what you forget is those gears were wound up and set set up um in the six days of creation so exactly what, what we're gonna see when the solar eclipse rolls around um what what day is it coming april 8th on uh, the pagan calendar nissan one on the biblical calendar nissan, ooh. nissan exactly exactly because nissan one is the inauguration of Moses' tabernacle. That is when the glory fell. 
That is when Nadab and Abihu died. That is when God uh. said to Moses, this is the beginning of the month. And guess what? Nisan 1 was the first day of the three days of darkness in the original place. And Nisan is, Nisan, um, for most Jews means um, you have to start cleaning your house for Passover. So <laughs> Exactly. So, because it's the beginning, exactly. it's, it's the beginning of redemption. It's the beginning of redemption because exactly. best of is redemption. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, so so and God, the gears, so, so God go wound ahead. up the God wound up the clock um, during the six days of creation, and in Nissan Nissan one when the solar eclipse happened. Well. That's what he had in mind when he wound up the clock in the six days of creation. He knew that there was going to be a solar eclipse on that day. So. Exactly. If NASA can figure 5,000 years of eclipses, surely the creator who created the scientist can do that. Absolutely. But the gears that he created are the <laughs> Mita gear, the Jubilee gear. The, the monthly gears for the festivals, those are the gears, the grandfather clock that we need to be a hold of and uh, be on if we want to connect with God on his calendar. You, we were talking about the calendar and you and I both um, connected on something that we both know that is when you start looking into the Shemitah years. And amazing, how do you know it's a Shemitah year? Did we just make it up and say, hey, let's start today? So give it over. When is a Shemitah year? It's, it's so difficult. It just involves the Hebrew year divided by seven. Oh, my gosh. Whatever <laughs> Hebrew year is, if it's divisible by seven, you know that's the seventh year. What a concept. So from when, when God created the world, he had in mind the Shemitah cycle. And if you can divide the year by seven and it comes out in the, it comes out even um, and it's, it's, it's good and clean, then... That's the Shemitah year. And it was it's, it was designed yeah. to be that way when the world was created. And even Adam, even Adam understood how else could Adam know, or the writer of the tour know how many years Adam lived unless they weren't keeping a calendar. And it was based on the sun and the moon, not just the sun. Oh, there's a lot of things to be said about that. Um, we know that. So um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be putting that in the article, but what I want to hear from you is, so what's the takeaway? What are we going to see? What can we, last time we kind of expected wars. It was all of the sources said there would be wars um, after the last solar calendar, uh, solar eclipse. So what are you, did you, did you get any portents? Did you, I know that you're a nonprofit, but is there something we can, we, we, the sources seem to say that will happen after this solar eclipse? Yes, yes. Let me <clears throat> say a couple of things. And I got this from one of the top Hebrew speaker, Israeli Hebrew guy, uh, who teaches Hebrew to the Hebrews. And he said, what's interesting, Amalek means the people who chop off heads. The very name Amalek, um, people. It, it, it means people who cut up body parts. Right. In the temple they did Malika, uh, which for the for the birds, they popped off their heads. So I'm um, exactly. Malik. And look what Hamas is doing. And Hamas, we get the English word violence. And that's why God destroyed the earth with the flood twice, he says, because of violence. And here you get Palestinians claiming to be the ancient Philistines, which means the invaders. I, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Right. And so... You know, what I see is the spirit of Amalek is moving mightily. And as you know, in Exodus 17, it says God will have war with Amalek in every generation. Hitler was the Amalek of his generation. And in this century, it is Iran, Hezbollah, the axis of evil, Hamas. And I tell you what, I believe this will be the final generation before Mashiach comes and Amalek will be destroyed. You're not, alone. I, I You're not alone in that belief. What's going to happen? You're not alone in that belief. Well, I, what's I amazing know a lot of major too, rabbis who are I saying the same thing. Were they really? 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of major. Wow, well, I'm, I'm glad to know that uh, I'm in good company. <laughs> you are in good company. But I sent you an article. I sent, I emailed you a thing of uh, the Hebrew alphabet in the ancient Paleo Proto Canaanite Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Did you I didn't get it? See it? I didn't see it. Okay, I, I sent it to you in a. I don't know if it was in an email, WhatsApp, or text. But you probably know Moses didn't use the modern font. Moses used the ancient font where the letter Aleph, which, uh, you know, it looked like a, oh, how do I say it? Like an ox. And the letter Tav right. looked like an X. And the letter Tav means sign or signature. And the Tav represents God's signature. Matter of fact, in Ezekiel, uh, I think it's 6-9, they put the letter Tav on the forehead of all the righteous, like an X. That's where we get the idea if someone can't write, they write their X, their signature. The eclipse that's taking place forms the letter X right over the United States, which right. to me the is last, the biggest sign. The last yes. eclipse went from the northeast, northwest to the yes. southeast, and this one, yes. is, this one is going from the south west to the northeast so it exactly forms, it forms a perfect x. x um you as you say the paleo is it the top it's the paleo letter the which letter the, 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 letter, top. the letter what top it forms right, the, 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 the letter top the paleo letter top and god is going to be signing his name on the continental united states <laughs> uh next exactly month. So it took him exactly. seven years to do it, but it's he writes slow. Well, that's what the warnings were. That's what the blood moons in 2014. Now, this is going to be mind-blowing. There were, uh, again, I don't know how much you remember about what I taught 10 years ago or more, but the floor blood moons happened during the 67-68 war. But they were a seven-year warning to the Yom Kippur War which was the first day of the Jubilee cycle. Mm. And then, because you only proclaim uh, the year of Jubilee on Yom Kippur, and it was the first day of the Jubilee cycle. And then the blood moons of 2014, 2015 was exactly a Shemitah cycle before the end of the Jubilee year. And on the last day, you have the Iron Swords War. So these blood moons, were to inform Israel, because the moons have to do with Israel, that they had a jubilee cycle, the first day would be war, and the last day would be war, and they need to have a heads up, but they weren't. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry, the, the, whole, uh, the whole concept of God signing his name on the continental U.S. It's mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing, and it's like, it's clear. It's like, it goes, the last one, it was like, it went down, and I remember it went over the hur hurricanes, and this one is exactly the opposite, and it's going to make a, it's going to make a cross in the center, that's, <laughs> X marks the spot, it's, it's in, really. In an area, in an area, known as Little Egypt. In an area, that's I'm That's where it intersects in southern Illinois, it intersects in an area known for hundreds of years as Little Egypt. There are cities all around it called Thebes, Goshen, Cairo, Karnak. They even have an Egyptian health institute there. And the university's symbol or logo is a pyramid and the god Horus. And in, here the eclipse is... On, yeah. the, on the first of Nissan. On the first of Nissan. Exactly. Which is when we start exactly. getting ready to clean our houses to come out of Egypt. And, and in the middle of the month, we'll be coming out of Egypt. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I... But wait, there's more. Okay. Exactly. One week after the October 7th massacre by Hamas, we had an annular solar eclipse that began at the same point in Oregon and it went all the way down through Texas. So now the, the eclipse that's coming across forms the ancient letter Aleph, like our capital A. With one leg going to South Carolina, the other leg going south through Texas, right. and now we have the the bar going across the A, and where it intersects in Texas, 
is in a place known as the Texas Triangle, the highest human sex trafficking and slaves goes on right there. And that's where the intersection takes place. And it's all about freeing the slaves from Egypt. And it's the letter all left. Again, God's picture is right on the whole United States. I just want to add, when I when I when the solar eclipse hit seven years ago, and I was writing about it, and uh, I, I I wasn't the only one. Um, there were a lot of lot of skeptics. Most people, are like, what are you talking about? Happens all the time. It doesn't mean anything. I think this time around there aren't going to be so many skeptics in the... Oh, I agree. I agree because, like I told you, there's only been eight solar eclipses out of the 12,000, only eight over the United States since it became a nation. And they all happened during wars. They happened during the Revolutionary War. They happened during the Civil War. They happened during the Vietnam War. And I believe we're going to see war in America. We're already going to have uh, like a civil war between uh, with Trump and Biden and those pro-Trump and pro-Biden, oh, uh, there'll be a big political war. We're it's also going to have a religious war between those who are pro-Israel and those who are pro-Palestinian. We're and, also going to see an uprising between uh, races, okay, like the Black Lives Matter and the white supremacists. People forget that see- that was like, that was practically a civil war already. That's, oh, I know. That summer there were, they were burning cities. And now you've got now the 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 America, it it's been it's it's got so many immigrants, and we oh don't know where you don't know where these immigrants came from. And I don't want to. I'm not God forbid anti-immigrants, but it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. There's a cultural all clash. of that. Yep, I talk about all of that in my book. How there's been like oh man, tens of thousands of Chinese mm. young men, military yes. age, who have come in. People they're, think they're, they're all South Americans and they're not. And they even have, no. I, I just, they, they just caught a guy who was a murderer and he had served in the Iranian uh, army and he's in America. Oh, exactly. They say we've had over a hundred different nations, a hundred yeah. different nations of people coming in. And, yeah. and then what I can't believe, uh, and I'm just talking of not necessarily about the people, but here, America left seven billion dollars to the Taliban when yeah. they left Afghanistan, and yet they won't let the settlers have rifles. What is wrong with this picture? And you know, it's funny. Sometimes things, uh, you know, pr- the funny thing about prophecy is it can happen, and you're expecting one thing, so you don't see it when it actually does happen. So we talk about Gog and, Go- and Mogog being the war of a lot of different nations. Well, you've got a lot of different nations in America already, inside America. So yeah. there can be... And they're terrible. They, no, they... We don't need a Trojan horse. We don't no. need a Trojan horse. You can read the paper. We're paying these terrorists to come in. We're setting them it's up crazy. in hotels. Giving you them know, credit I'm cards and phones. And... Medical aid. This is insane. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 it's, it's all written down. And it's all happening. And also... You know, we're talking about Nissan, and that's the beginning of the plagues. Well, the entire world just went through a plague. You know, oh, the, of course. You know, the in the pre-COVID days, you know, everyone was like, "Oh no, all this prophecy talk and all this." You know, well, I don't hear that so much anymore because people who went through COVID and people yeah, exactly. who are looking at Ukraine and and what's happening in the Middle East, and the Middle East is not just Israel. It's not just Israel. You have the Houthis. Right. You have so many different. There's so many nations involved in in what's happening in the Middle East. You have American um, carrier groups there. No one's asking questions. <laughs> right, right. And and here's the interesting thing: because America is at its weakest point militarily, and they've agreed to that. I believe this is the year China will attack Taiwan. North Korea will attack South Korea. Iran will attack Israel through Hezbollah this year. And what's fascinating is the first time Amalek attacked was in the month of Iyar. And then we find the second major attack was at Purim in the month of Adar. What's right in the middle? Nisan. And I believe the next big attack by Amalek against Israel will be in the month of Nisan. Because Daniel 
in his prophecy, when he prayed and fasted for three weeks, it was during Nisan. And this uh, angel comes and says he would have come at the very beginning of Nisan, but he was fighting the prince of Persia. That is Iran. That is Iran. And, so, and the prophecy there says, what I'm showing you is what's going to happen in the Acheron, in the end times. So that whole prophecy was for our day, and it was in the month of Nisan. So I would pray the IDF would be ready this coming Nisan for a major attack from Iran and Hezbollah. I also know the way prophecy works. You know, you're gonna you're giving pretty precise dates of pretty precise events that are going to be happening, um, and I'm sure that when it absolutely happens that way, and I I know it will. You know the way. I mean, if it's written down that way, and if it's if it's if it's you know it, it it's just, you have the sources. When it happens, people are going to be like. Oh, no, no, that's not why. No, 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 it wasn't really written. You know, people, the, 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 the ability of, to, den to denial, the ability of denial is, it never ceases to amaze me. You know, and it, it is. I mean, yeah. you have this, you, have, you had a, uh, a, 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 an eclipse back then. And, you know, after COVID and after Ukraine and after Afghanistan and after what's happening in Israel, and people will still say, oh, no, no, no connection. You know, but here we're seeing the connections. Here we're absolutely And the most amazing connection <clears throat> that I see isn't just April 8th. It's over the next two years because every tribe was giving a month. The 12 tribes, you got 12 months. Nisan is oh, the no. tribe of Judah. And the solar eclipse begins on Nisan 1. The next solar eclipse is on Tishri 1. And then it goes back again to Nisan 1. And then it goes back again to Tishri 1. But those are all solar eclipses? Hello. Those yes, are all... that are coming over the next two years. A solar eclipse on Nisan 1, Tishri 1. Nisan 1, Tishri 1. And the four lunar eclipses are coming on Purim, Adar 15, and then Elul 15, the month of repentance. And then again on Purim, Adar 15, and again <clears throat> on Elul 15, the month of repentance. That's when they're coming. And <clears throat> those are the exact marching orders when they went to take the promised land, when God lighted Israel up for a war. Those are exactly the first month and the sixth month handed off to the first month, to the sixth month. And you have all the handmaids. The solar eclipses represent Rachel and Leah. The lunar eclipses represent Zilpah and Bilhah, and you have them in the same order God told them to march to war. <laughs> you just blew my mind. You just totally blew my mind. Uh, uh, that's what I mean. That's when I say that Pastor Biltz ha sees it so clearly like no one else. I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing the eclipses related to the, to the um, mothers of the tribes, um, the yes. mothers of the tribes. And also you're seeing them in relation to how um, the nation of Israel arranged themselves around the tabernacle in the desert. And yes. to pull all that together, wow, wow. I mean, I'm seeing it as a, as a very, as a, what we say, a simple yid. I'm seeing it as a very simple Jew that when you start talking about lunar eclipses on, 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 on Purim, Purim. Two years in a row. Two years in a row, um, a lot of people think that Yom Kippur is the most intense Jewish holiday, and it's not. The most intense Jewish holiday, at least for Hasidic Jews, is Purim. Um, it's what we say, Nahafochu. It's when everything gets turned upside down. You think that Haman is going to win, but Mordechai wins. And the ability to turn everything upside down and have the most unexpected outcome, well, that's Purim. That's Purim. I mean, I, I remember spending one year in Purim in reserve duty in Ramallah while Yasser Arafat was just on the other side of the hill. And no one could have anticipated where we are today from, from and that was Purim just turned everything upside down. And a, and a lunar eclipse is also, it's turning up thing, turning things upside down. You think there's going to be a moon? Oops, there's no moon. So, um, wow. So, okay. So Pastor Biltz, 
I, I have a rule when I when I when I when I I don't have too many rules in my life. I have a rule when I do interviews, which is interviews are their their introductions, and you always want people to to want more. Um, so um, I want you to send me the links so that people can pre-order your book and get it the first possible moment, get it into their hands. Um, this kind of stuff you need to see it written down in front of you. There's just there's too much of it. And you're pulling it together from so many different sources and 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 painting the big picture, which is truly amazing. Um, so hopefully we'll have a chance, another chance to talk about this either just before the eclipse or maybe <laughs> after it when we start seeing what when when the when the pieces start falling into place. Um so Pastor Bills, thank you so much. It's really amazing. Don't go away. I'm just gonna stop the recording. Um I just but for people who who are interested in seeing the big picture and how how God moves the cosmos to show us what's happening, um, this is definitely one of those cases. And Pastor Bills definitely paints the picture. Thank you so much, Pastor. I really appreciate it. You bet.